Okay, a lot of slides with text on them, and of course you can read them if you look on the slide gallery for these slides. And if you don't know where that slide gallery is, please just send me an email. But let's define just the simple word temperature. As it turns out, the word temperature is not as easy as maybe you once thought. But for our purposes, we can call temperature a measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules in an object or a system. Kinetic energy is the energy of movement. And if you think about a series of molecules in a glass or a series of molecules of water, they're moving around relative to each other just naturally, that kind of random kinetic motion. As their temperature increases, they move faster. As their temperature decreases, they slow down and move more slowly. So thinking about temperature in that way is a very good way of understanding what that word temperature means. A thermometer, of course, is an instrument for measuring the temperature of that object. And the traditional th thermometer that you're used to, the mercury thermometer, where you have a, a column of mercury or a column of alcohol that's rising in a tube, as the temperature goes up, as the kinetic energy of those air molecules or wherever that thermometer happens to be immersed in, as those beat on the end of the thermometer, they exchange energy and it causes an expansion of that liquid and causes the temperature to go up. Same thing if we have cooler uh, temperatures. That mercury thermometer or alcohol thermometer are releasing heat to the surroundings and causing contraction of the liquid inside the thermometer. So it's kind of important in a sense to use your experience with thermometers when we think about different kinds of temperature scales or think about measuring the temperature of the ocean and understanding what's going on. It's really an exchange of heat between the thermometer and the surroundings and we'll talk about that in just a second. Thermistors are a kind of electronic thermometer and maybe some of you through work or through some other experience have had experience with electronic thermistors. Maybe you have one in your house. Maybe you have a weather station that has an electronic a thermometer or a thermistor. It acts on a similar principle to the regular traditional thermometer except that a piece of metal is really substituted for the liquid and as that metal uh, heats up or warms up it increases or decreases its ability to carry a current and it's not so important that we understand how those work but just to recognize that there are different ways both electronic ways and traditional ways for measuring temperature. Well, here's an exercise, perhaps in futility, but we will talk about temperatures in terms of Celsius scale, and, we'll, and most of us are familiar with the Fahrenheit scale. That was my cat. Oceanographers and scientists often use a Kelvin scale, but we're not going to use that this much in talking about temperatures in the class, but it is useful to think about the two different scales that are in use in the world, and if you ever travel in Europe and you encounter the Celsius scale. This little lesson here will give you a little bit of help. But on the Celsius scale, we've the man that came up with this defined zero degrees as the freezing point of water. On the Fahrenheit scale, that turns out to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Mr. Fahrenheit set the freezing point of water as 32 for reasons that we won't go into, but reasons that are fascinating if you ever check out the history of it. It's easy to freeze water, and so this provides a convenient lower endpoint for any temperature scale. It's also easy to boil water, and so at the high end of the scale, Mr. Fahrenheit and Mr. Celsius set their particular boiling points at these temperatures. 100 degrees centigrade for the Celsius scale is boiling, and 212 degrees Fahrenheit is boiling on the Fahrenheit scale. Of course, your body is 98.6 degrees, which is your normal temperature, and your body is 37 degrees centigrade, which is your normal temperature in the Celsius scale. So if you go to a European doctor and they tell you your temperature is 37 degrees, don't worry, you're not dead. It's just in the Celsius scale. The average ocean temperature is around 60, 62 degrees, okay, or 17 degrees centigrade. And this is just a good number to know and be aware of so you know whether the water is colder than average or warmer than average um, on those scales. If you think about these scales, so let's think about the Celsius scale for a minute. Between the freezing point and the boiling point, how many units do we have? 
0 to 100. So there are 100 separate divisions on a thermometer that describe the range of temperature values between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. The Fahrenheit scale, on the other hand, has a range from 32 degrees to 212 degrees, much finer increments. 212 minus 32 gives you the number of tick marks, if you want to think about it that way. So as it turns out, the Fahrenheit scale is much more uh, accurate or precise in a sense that it gives you much finer divisions. You can resolve small temperature differences much easier with the Fahrenheit scale than you can with the Celsius scale. Of course, the Kelvin scale is the same way. You can resolve very fine differences. So when people say one scale is better than the other, they're really just arguments that uh, I think um, are left for temperature philosophers or something like that. We use the Fahrenheit scale. We're familiar and comfortable with the Fahrenheit scale. And there's nothing wrong with that as far as I'm concerned. But it's always a good idea to be aware of the Celsius scale and, and what that means, particularly if you travel and also as you encounter those Celsius measurements in the book.